Hi. Well, uh, today uh, we're going to focus on an interesting and amusing story, and uh, it's the story behind the chart you're looking at right now, which is the biotech index, and you can see it's gotten hammered quite uh, quite severely from 80 down to about 60. It's rallied back to the high 60s, but uh, the story is quite amusing because uh, it all begins with this uh, article that you see right here in the New York Times, September 20th. A uh, description of a guy called uh, Martin Shkreli, who uh, runs a company called Turing Pharmaceuticals. And uh, this is uh, the article that uh, has prompted uh, the entire biotech index to be uh, valued dramatically lower by the market. Um, obviously, it's outrageous, uh, as is the title of this uh, channel. And uh, basically, uh, the story describes uh, this uh, fellow, Martin Shkreli, who, uh, through his biotech company, paid $50 million for the rights to a drug, which is called uh, Daraprim, and uh, immediately raised the price from $13.50 per tablet to $750 per tablet. Uh, everybody uh, predictably was outraged, but uh, the results of that uh, were really uh, far-reaching because um, Hillary Clinton, uh, running for president and looking for uh, good talking points, immediately jumped all over this and promised that uh, these price in increases would be capped. Uh, tempest in a teapot, perhaps, but the market started looking at all the other biotech companies, specifically one of the largest, Valiant, um, and if you look at Valiant, I can tell you that um, looking at their annual average price increases, in 2012, their average drug increased in price by 21%. Excessive, perhaps. In 2013, an additional 36%. In 2014, an additional 50%. In 2015, 65% so far. So you have these drug companies of which uh, Turing Pharmaceutical and Valiant are just two examples, but I can assure you that this is prevalent industry-wide. Um, can you explain to me how drug prices can be increasing by 50% per year? How a drug can go from 1350 to $750? And I'll tell you, the only reason that they're able to uh, sustain these price increases is because nobody is allowed to compete. Uh, these, the medical industry is exempt from antitrust. Uh, if you go in and have your car repaired, you can get an estimate as to what it'll cost you, and the repair center is on a bound to stick to that estimate. If you go into the hospital to have yourself repaired, Number one, you cannot get anybody to give you uh, a binding uh, estimate on what the procedure will cost. And secondly, they're not even bound by their own estimate if you were able to get one. Uh, the medical system is as outrageous as the banking system in this country. Things are completely out of control. One of the few uh, areas that I do think government is uh, potentially effective in is, is controlling the rapacious appetite of uh, capitalists. And I'm not suggesting that artificial measures be put in place. Uh, I'm not suggesting that the government um, force these, co these companies to reduce their prices. What I am suggesting is that there should be a free market. And the free market means that if I can buy this drug in a at a cheaper price in another location, bring it to the States and sell it at a profit, I should be entitled to do so. There should be some uh, restriction to make sure I'm not selling counterfeit goods. There should be, um, and obviously here we get into the details where the devil resides, but the bottom line is that the reason these price increases are sustained is because the medical industry here is one of the cartels that enjoys government protection. And I would suggest that um, these outrageous price increases for drugs are just the tip of the iceberg and that the deeper one digs into the medical industry and their pricing practices, the more foul the stench. Good luck to you out there.